Hello and welcome back to another read with me. I am Isabel, Isabel Bedell, and I'm here to read another amazing chapter on this book that we are reading, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. And if you haven't checked out the previous videos, definitely go take a look. They are really, really good. And not only that, but chapter five was pretty decent. Very short, sweet to the point, one of those good, good, feel good chapters. So without further ado, let's get into it. This is chapter number six, Love the One You Is, okay? If we really love ourselves, everything in our life works. Louise Hay, author, publisher, the godmother of self-help who was doing it way back when it wasn't cool. Hmm, let's get into that. I was hanging out with my brother Bobby at my brother Bobby's house one day, lying on the couch, watching his, ten, his then 10-year-old son waddle around. At one point, someone knocked something off the ta coffee table, and my little nephew bent down to pick it up. Bobby turned to me and said, did you see that? The guy knows exactly how it's done. He bends at the knees, keeps his back straight, hips squared, stomach tight, flawless. Thrilled to have such a willing and skilled exhibit A, Bobby then proceeds to spend the next couple of minutes dropping more things on the floor. A spoon, a TV remote, an empty can of beer, and my nephew, in perfect form, continued to pick it all up as my brother kept up running commentary on his posture, muscle usage, seriousness of manner, and the fact that my nephew was pulling it all off with great dignity, even though his diaper was sagging. It's incredible. Did, did she say 10 month old or 10 years old? Then two-year-old, sorry, apologize you there. It's a two-year-old, it has a diaper, and it's picking things up. It's incredible. The kid could flip over a car without straining his back. I can barely pull up my pants without having to be rushed to the hospital. When we're born, we have this instinctual understanding of some of the most important basics of life that includes and goes way beyond bending at our knees instead of our lower backs to pick up a beer can off the floor. We're born knowing how to trust our in instincts, how to breathe deeply, how to eat only when we're hungry, how to not care about what anyone thinks of our singing voices, dance moves, or hairdos. We know how to play, create, and love without holding back. Then as we grow, and learn from other people around us, we replace many of those primal understandings with negative false beliefs, fear, shame, self-doubt, and then we wind up in this emotional and physical pain. Then we either numb our pain with drugs, sex, booze, TV, Cheetos, or we settle for mediocrity, or we rise to the occasion and remember how, to tr how truly mighty we are and set out to relearn everything we knew at the beginning all over again. It's like we're born with a big bag of money, more than enough to fund any dreams of ours, and instead of following our instincts in our hearts, we invest in what other people believe we should invest in. Some people invest in believing they're too old to go out clubbing when they love nothing more than the boogie. Some invest in being tough and too cool for school when all they want to want is love and connection. Some invest in being ashamed of their sexuality instead of being their gloriously gay selves. As we continue to buy into these things that aren't even true for us, our inner fortunes dwindle away. And it isn't until we reconnect with who we truly are and start investing in what's true for us that we start to live rich full, authentic lives. And while there are countless ways that we rip ourselves off, there's one in particular that is, without a doubt, the most rampant and the most devastating of all. We invest everything we've got into believing that we're not good enough. 
We arrive here as perfect little bundles of joy and then set about the task of learning to unlove ourselves. How unbelievably ridiculous is that? Self-love, the simplest yet most powerful thing ever, flies right out the window when we start taking in outside information. I'm not talking about conceit or narcissism because those things also come from fear and lack of self-love. I'm talking about that deep connection with our highest selves, an unshakable ability to forgive our lowest. I'm talking about loving ourselves enough to let go of guilt, resentment, and criticism and embrace compassion, joy, and gratitude. When we're happy and all in love with ourselves, we can't be bothered with the BS, our own, or other people's. Imagine what our world would be like if everyone loved themselves so much that they weren't threatened by other people's opinions, skin colors, or sexual preferences, or talents, education, or possessions, or lack of possessions, or religious beliefs, or customs, or their general tendency to just be whoever the hell they are. Imagine how different your reality would be and the reality of everyone surrounding you if you woke up every single morning certain of your own lovability and your critically important role on this planet. And if you poo-pooed shame, guilt, and self-doubt and self-loathing and allowed yourself to be, do, and have everything your little heart desired, that's the kind of world I want to live in. In the interest of perpetuating such a radical reality, altering self-love, here are some of the best ways to win yourself all over again. And she has a few that we're going to go over. I believe there are nine in total, okay? Number one is appreciate how special you are. Number one, appreciate how special you are. There will never be anyone exactly like you. You were given a special gift, a talent to share with the world. And even though everybody has special gifts and talents, nobody will use theirs quite the same way that you will. You have a way of being in the world and a perspective that's very unique to you. You are the only one who thinks your thoughts the way that you think them. You have created your own unique reality and are living your life according to your own unique path. You are the only one. You are the only one that will ever be. You are kind of a big deal. Number two, drown yourself in affirmations. Trust me, I wouldn't do this to you unless I had to, but affirmations work. You don't have to say them in the mirror. You don't have to hug yourself or buy a special rainbow journal and lock on to, to it and write them down. But if you want to turn the ship around, you need to rewire your brain and trick it into thinking differently. You have to train it differently. And this is what affirmations can do for you. Figure out which affirmations you need to hear the most and repeat them all day long in your head, in your car, while you're walking down the street, pretending to be on the phone, under your breath, in the line of the DMV. Write them on the post-it notes and stick them around your house and your mirrors, your refrigerator, and your car. Write down your favorite affirmations 10 times every morning and 10 times every night before you go to bed and say them out loud. Here are some of the aff affirmations specific to self-love. Pick one or two that work for you and pummel yourself with them. I deserve and receive, I deserve and receive massive amounts of love every moment of every day. I am one with the universe. The universe is awesome, and so am I. My heart is open. Love pours in and out. I receive all the good that life has to offer me. I am brilliant, bright, and beautiful. I love how tall I am, and I love the size of my ass. Or whatever. If none of these work, come up with some that don't make you gag, but that strike a nerve with you. The more emotion you feel around what you're saying, the more power it will have to bring about positive change. And yes, at the beginning, it may feel 
like you're lying to yourself. But the truth is, you're living the lie. So the affirmations get you back to truth. This can't be just rattling off nonsense. You have to feel it and want it and get worked up by it in order for it to actually work. Mm, I like that. When you constantly deny... Oh, sorry. First of all, I do believe in affirmations. I do believe that they work. I don't believe that you have to go so crazy on them or that you should impose affirmations onto other people. Therefore, I do believe that if you can start saying specific things to yourself, you'll start to believe them over time. So I'm curious, what are some affirmations that you will be diving into? What are affirmations that strike a nerve that you want to start believing, start trusting, start implementing into your life? Hmm. Put them in the, in the comments below. Would love to hear that. Okay, number three, do things you love. When you constantly deny yourself the love or the people, food, things, and experiences that make you feel the most alive, that sends a pretty lousy message home. Look at your life and see where you're letting yourself down. If you hear yourself saying things like, I love going out to see live music. I can't remember the last time I did it. Well, make some time. We're all busy, but it's the people who make enjoying their lives a priority who enjoy their lives. Right now, there are thousands of people all over the world at yoga retreats overlooking the ocean, dancing their asses off at outdoor music festivals or whooping it up on the Disney cruise on your dreams. Really listen to how you speak and pay attention to what you do and make a conscious effort to increase your joy in whatever capacity you can. It can be anything from spending a weekday afternoon with a great friend to quitting your hateful job to buying a pair of completely impractical but completely awesome new shoes to going on a surf vacation in Costa Rica. It's about being proactive about creating a life you love instead of meekly living the one you think you're stuck with. Give yourself the gift of a joyous life while you're still among the living. Also, if you're the kind of person who puts everyone else's needs first, start putting yours up front. Those who are used to you being their personal assistant will still love you even though they'll be somewhat grouchy about you not wanting, waiting on them hand and foot anymore. Buy a new pair of jeans, open up a savings account, hire someone to do your dishes, make your kids clean out the cat box. You aren't a selfish person for taking care of yourself, just the happier one. And take care of yourself as if you're the most awesome person you've ever met. I love that. Number four, find a replacement. We've gotten so used to our negative knee-jerk reactions to ourselves that we never think to question them. We simply take them as a truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But once we become aware of our thought patterns and behaviors, we can consciously change them. So start paying attention. What runs through your mind when you look in the mirror? What happens inside you when you see someone totally succeeding at something you'd love to do? but have never let yourself try? What do you think and feel when you walk up to a group of really good looking, successful people? Or when you try your best to pull something off and you fail? Or when you get dumped by someone who is totally awesome and hot? Or when you walk around all day with your fly open? Or when you leave your coffee on the roof of your car and you drive off? Or when you let a friend down, or when you stub your toe to on the kitchen table for the 10th time, or when you forget your dad's birthday, or when you snap at someone who didn't quite deserve it as harshly as you gave it to them. Notice the verbiage that runs through your mind when you're being the most heinous to yourself and 
come up with a new and improved response. So for example, if every time that you look in the mirror, your first thought is yikes, make a conscious effort to change it to hi, gorgeous. If you have a complicated relationship with your father and beat yourself up every single time you say something awful to him, replace I'm a monster and I'm just a little bunny working through my issues. And then, of course, apologize to him. If your standard response to screwing up is, ugh, her royal clumsiness strikes again, replace that with, what can I learn from this? The most important thing is to free yourself from the drama and the conviction that your current version of yourself is the truth. I don't care if you're all. That's easy for you to say. You don't have a nose that makes it look like someone parked a yacht in your face because one day you could see some fancy and famous fashion model with a nose far bigger than yours who has decided that she is way gorgeous anyways. And suddenly you'll feel beautiful and confident, all proud of your nose when just the day before you were like considering sawing it off. This is how ridiculous we are. Don't spend your life clinging to the insulting decisions you've made about yourself. Instead, make the conscious choice to replace them with new and improved ones. Number five. Ditch the self-deprecating humor. Incessant self-deprecating humor is for losers. I get it. It can be hilariously funny and I'm totally guilty of it. And from time to time, there's nobody I'd more enjoy backing over with my car than the guy who can't laugh at himself. But I'm talking about the non-stop, non-stop self-flagging at I suck fest. Ripping on yourself gets old fast, especially if it's your shtick. So if you're one of those people who falls back on making fun of yourself every hour on the hour, not only are you basically begging people to think you're a loser, but you're begging yourself to think you're a loser. And it's like hitting yourself over and over and over and over with a crowbar. Why on earth would you do that to your awesome self? What you should tell yourself on a daily basis is more powerful than you know. Seemingly, seemingly harmless jokes over time turn into seriously destructive beliefs. Our thoughts become words, our words become beliefs, and our beliefs become actions, and our actions become habits, and habits become our realities. So if your favorite joke is that you couldn't get a date in if you, demand, if you demanded one at gunpoint and you spend every Saturday night alone, perhaps you should come up with a new one-liner. And most importantly, constantly making fun of yourself is such a cheap way to be funny. Any way, anyone can do it. So push yourself to come up with a new script. Your confidence and we humor sobs will thank you. I agree. I agree. Whenever I, I see that, I think I think I've grown my tolerance so high that when I do see that I can't stick around. I can't stick around and I don't feel I think like I do have like a a stopping point. You know what I mean? When I do see someone like just beating themselves up and like making fun of themselves to the point that it it's kind of like awkward. I'm like, I do say something and then I kind of just walk away. You know, there comes a point where you just walk away and you just have to move on from that because you're allowing that activity to happen. And I feel like in today's generation, like we can see that and we can call people out on it. I feel like it, that, used to be not allowed calling people out or I don't know maybe it's always been a thing or maybe when you get to a point in your life when you realize that you are worthy when you are um awesome how Jen says it you look at those things and you're like uh I've grown past that I've worked really hard to get past that so but whatever it is that you're doing it's it's not respect to me or to you 
obviously. So, yeah. Okay, number six, let the love in. Receive compliments gracefully instead of countering with a disclaimer of, oh, this ratty old thing? Try this instead. Thank you. Period. Take care of your body too. We, if you're anything like me, run around doing all or all of our busy work and our poor little bodies flapping behind us like old wind, old wind socks. When we're pressed for time, it's often the first thing to get overlooked. I've got five meetings today. I'll do my yoga tomorrow and have a power bar for lunch. Meanwhile, during our little sojourn here on earth, we need our bodies more than they need us. Say nice things about your body. Dress it up and take it out. Give it a hot sex, luxurious baths and massages. Move it, stretch it, nourish it, hydrate it, pay attention to it. The better our bodies feel, the happier and more productive we are. Number seven, don't compare yourself to others. Have you ever done something that you're so proud of and feel on top of the world? about it until you see that someone else has done something similar to that and in your mind it is better and all of a sudden you feel sad comparison is the fastest way to take all the fun out of your life it's none of your business what other people are doing all that matters is that you're enjoying yourself and pleased with what you're creating it's preciously in uniqueness It's precisely your uniqueness that makes you awesome. Deciding that someone else's uniqueness is better than your own isn't exactly being your own best buddy about things. You can't, can you imagine what a world would be if our biggest heroes succumbed to the perils of comparison? Like what if Marilyn Monroe compared herself to Kate Moss and decided she would never lose her curves? Or if the guys in Led Zeppelin compared themselves to Mozart, dude, that guy's huge way hewer hewer than we'll ever be and he doesn't even have a drummer and I think we should get rid of ours and maybe have some harps while we're at it you are more than enough avoid comparison like the plague number eight forgive yourself and listen up this one's very very important you have screwed up in the past and you will screw up again every human Every human is born with the ability to make spectacular mistakes. You are not alone. Screwing up is not your special skill. Get over it. Dragging around guilt and self-criticism is beyond unhealthy and is utterly pointless, not to mention boring. You aren't a better person for feeling guilty or bad about yourself, just a sadder one. Get clear on this truth. Guilt, shame, self-criticism, they're the most destructive forces in your life which is why forgiving yourself is one of the most powerful. Here's an excellent way to do that. Think of a specific thing that you did that you feel very bad about. Call it up in your mind and feel it in your body. Repeat the following thing over and over and over while thinking of it and really feel what you're saying to yourself, okay? This is a script that she's giving. Holding on to my bad feelings about this is doing nothing but harming me and everyone else and preventing me from enjoying my life fully. I am an awesome person. I choose to enjoy my life, and I choose to let this go. Repeat this until you feel a sense of freedom and lightness around your issue. And it may take a day or a week or several months, or it could happen right away, but however long it takes, do it. Because if you want to be free, you have to put in the time. See chapter 15 for more tips on forgiveness and letting go. And if you need to apologize to someone, pick up the phone. And last but not least, number nine, love yourself. Because it's the holy grail of happiness. And that concludes chapter number six, which is called Love the One You Is. Love it. I really, really liked this chapter. I like when authors break things down in numbers and they have like little like subsections and we can go into the subsections and have a more in-depth convo on that. I love that. 
And then chapter number seven, okay, is I know you are, but what am I? So that's going to be pretty good. Now, what I want and what I do believe this chapter offers is exercises. So if you put it in the comments of the different types of exercises that you're uh, pursuing based on this chapter, I would love to hear them. You know, this is a community of personal development. We celebrate you. We can't wait to hear your awesomeness. And most importantly, we know that you are incredible. And the fact that you're here and you're taking the time to self-improve and gift yourself the opportunity to show the world how amazing and unique and special you are, that just shows another level of incredibleness. So put it in the comments. I look forward to uh, hearing from you and we shall speak soon. I'll see you in the next chapter where we go into chapter number seven. I know you are, but what am I? Bye.